so messed up I forgot to preach this Bobby <laughs> we are here in the name that is high the name that is holy the name that in whose name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to celebrate the beautiful life of our dear sister sister Kristen Danielle Taylor Spencer. What a wonderful woman of God that she was and that she is now in the presence of God. We can celebrate in our heart, our mind, our soul, and our spirit because she's absent from the body. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. She's present, present with the Lord. Amen. Come on, give God some glory. Come on, give God some glory. He's worthy. Of all of our praise, please you can sit. Please. At this time, we will be led in the scripture readings from the Word of God. Our Old Testament reading will come from the Reverend C.C. C. Mills, Jr., pastor of the Friendship Baptist Church in Greenville, Tennessee. Our New Testament reading will come from Reverend Aaron Murphy, the pastor of the Thankful Baptist Church here in Johnson City, Tennessee. The prayer of comfort will then come from the Reverend D. Lynn Bachman, Associate Minister at the Philippi Baptist Church in Elizabethan, Tennessee. And then we'll be led in the ministry of song by, first of all, Reverend Demetrius Latini. And then a song coming from my little big sister and my little brother, Sister Fidelma Hancock and brother James Turner. Pastor into this family. Proverbs thirty one twenty five through thirty one. God's magnificent word reads like this. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice <laughs> in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruits of her hand and let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen. Greetings in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to this beloved family. Um, we love you, John. Love you, Minister Cromwell, and Amen. beautiful children and parents, siblings, those who have grown up with her in high school Hallelujah. and all throughout elementary. Greetings to you. Um, I'm instructed to read First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52 through 57. For the Bible reads, 
in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has been put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Uh, yes. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? Hallelujah. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Love you all. Amen. May we bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly and Most Gracious Father, Dear Lord, as we come to you right now, Lord, we come to you with troubled hearts, Lord Jesus. But Lord, we come to you sharing the victory, knowing, dear Heavenly Father, that Christian has gotten the reward that we're all looking for, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the woman that she was. I thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for her husband, mother, father, sons. I thank you for this family, dear Heavenly Father. But Lord, as we come to you, we come to you humbly, Lord Jesus, knowing that, dear Heavenly Father, you deserve the best, dear Heavenly Father. And that is what you received right now. You received our best, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we're going to miss her. But we thank you for the memories that we have, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the blessing that she was and the smile that she had, Lord Jesus. We thank you for all the things, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, that you have given us to remember about Christian, Lord Jesus. And Lord, most of all, I just thank you for knowing, Lord Jesus, that she was saved, dear Heavenly Father. Knowing that she knew you, Lord Jesus. Knowing, dear Heavenly Father, that she called upon your holy name. Lord, we just thank you for this life. We thank you for this day of celebration, Lord Jesus. For these and all things we ask in your sweet, precious, and holy name. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Number seven, John.
I've had some good days I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days And some lonely nights When I Sometimes my clouds hang low I can hardly see
love would never, never, never see. Well, I tried him and I found his conversations are true.
this time we will be blessed through the ministry of comfort and encouragement and reflections coming first of all from Kristen's mother-in-law, Minister Piggy, Peggy Spencer Crumble, and then from, if that ain't Jesus, don't answer it. And then from the director for Northeast Regional Health Office, Mrs. Rebecca English, and each one of you will come and speak from this rostrum. Her uncle, Bishop William Holloway, pastor, Livingstone Church in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and then her big brother, Brother Robert, Robbie Taylor, Jr. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, to Reverend Lashney, my pastor, all the ministers of the gospel. It's just a blessing for me to stand before you today and give reflections of, I won't say my daughter-in-law, and she's my daughter in love too, Amen. but my daughter. Amen. Amen. Now, God is so infinite in his wisdom. Because 11 years ago today, on this exact date, October the 2nd, 2010, my son and Christian were united in holy matrimony right here at this altar. Amen. And to my family, we stand united today, especially for John, the boys, her parents, and her brother, and the daughter-in-law, Dr. LaDonna. We stand united for them yes. as a family. We stand united that God does not make a mistake. Oh, right. We stand united yes. living in the uh, uh, Kristen's love and legacy of her love. Yeah. We stand united. Yes. We stand united that we have in this family three and four generations, yes. starting from the youngest one, uh, the infant that's here, amen, to amen. Doc our oldest one in his 90s. We have four generations present here today. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Our family is special because we are a family of believers. And I was more than happy, oh, when, when my son married Kristen because she is a believer. Amen. And I didn't say was, she is a believer. Amen. 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 And as I do my reflection, if uh, you would ask her mom, how in the world did they meet? She would tell you, at Food Line grocery store. <laughs> so we went from Food Line to the altar here, y'all. Okay. And Kristen was so special to me because she was like a daughter. And she and John included me in a lot of their family activities. Now, ah. Think about it. When uh, God blessed them when they got married, there are three men that uh, Kristen could wrap her fingers around. That's her daddy, her brother Rodney, and my son John. <laughs> daddy had a limousine here waiting to carry the wedding party to Carnegie Hall and back here so we wouldn't have to drive our vehicles, vehicles back and forth. And so I was on that uh, limousine and I said, how did this happen with all those young people, beautiful young people in uh, our family in the wedding? And I thought I was just as young as they were. <laughs> yeah. As God blessed uh, John and Kristen to uh, buy a home, <laughs> Kristen asked me one day to go with her to buy some things for the house. I said, okay. But the only thing about it, she left the key in the house. So when we got back, she said, oh, Gigi, they call me Gigi said, uh, Gigi, what we going to do? So I said, well, I said, I think they left a, a window open because they were washing the uh, uh, windows. I saw them uh, do that, John and her dad. So I said, let's go back and go through the window. 
So I put a chair, and that's when I was younger too, y'all. But I lift a uh, uh, Kristen up by her bottom and pushed her up through the window to go to the kitchen, and she landed in the sink. But before she got landed, she said, Gigi, don't you look at my bottom. I said, girl, I ain't looking at your bottom. I said, I'm looking at both of our bottoms, scared somebody's gonna think that two black women are breaking in this house. I said, get your cell phone up through here. Uh, so we, we had some hilarious times together. And she allowed me to uh, work with the boys, my dear grandsons. Oh yes, Jaden and Grant. And uh, when uh, Grant, was, uh, uh, Grant was born, they called me one o'clock in the morning. And uh, Kristen was having false labor pains. <laughs> we didn't know they were false, but it was false labor pains. They said, Mama, come on, go to the uh, 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 emergency room. So I did, and Kristen let out a loud yell with one of those pains and hollered, oh! And I hollered, oh, gee, in the name of Jesus. And John said, now, Mama, if you're going to do that, I could have left you at home. <laughs> and time went on, and then she included me in rearing the boys. And uh, with uh, Jaden, Jaden got a big wheel for Christmas one year. And then uh, there are big steps at my house and their house too. I said, I gotta teach you how to uh, not go over that ledge right there now. So when you get to the edge of the uh, steps, I'm gonna teach you how to put on brakes, say skirt, and S-T-O-P, stop. Well, Jaden got too close one day and his mom hollered out, Kristen hollered out, stop Jaden, stop. He looked at her and he said, S-T-O-P, stop. <laughs> Taught him how to spell a three, y'all. And Grant, when we, we were uh, potty training Grant, Kristen allowed me to help, and uh, uh, Jaden too. Now this is a trick, I'm gonna uh, get a patent and pin on it. Uh, so I put about six or seven goldfish crackers into the uh, toilet stool. And I said, now boys, make the fish swim. Okay? And they learn how to potty that way. <laughs> you talking about some fish swimming. <laughs> but more on a serious note, and I shall uh, end soon. A year and a half ago, we received the uh, di news of the diagnosis of Christian having breast cancer. I myself being a breast cancer survivor of eight years, her pastor called me, Reverend Latchney, and his wife, and they said, you're gonna have to be a breach bearer. You're gonna have to be a prayer warrior like never before, Minister Cromwell. You're gonna have to stand in the gap. You're gonna have to pray without ceasing. I said, sir, that's a hard charge. He said, but you can do it because I've gotten revelation from the Lord. And he called me in to give me special anointing oil and called me in over his office there, he and his wife. And they prayed over me like they've never prayed over me before and anointed me. But they anointed me for such a time as that one and a half years ago. And you see, later on that year too, her mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. And we became what the Bible is called a three-braided cord not easily unwoven. Amen. That's in the word, you all. Mm -hmm. And we prayed, we praised, we talked, we cried, we gave thanksgiving. But most of all, we still praise God no matter what. And Christian said, well, I'm going to praise him because even some mothers die even younger than this with them giving me a diagnosis like this. So we went out praying and praising y'all. And we are rejoicing today. Ah, uh, yes, it may seem in the natural that she's young, but God knew best. And as I said, God does not make a mistake. So my family, we are a family of believers. And we're going to praise God today and celebrate today on out because God is good. And as the hymn says, be not dismayed, John, Grant, Jaden, family. Well, God will take care of us. Yes. Yes. He did win. Oh.
Good afternoon. When Sylvia and John asked me to speak about Kristen, I said, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy enough to do it. And then I thought, you should know how she was, not only with you, but at work and what an impact she made on our lives. I will share with you a story personally that Kristen and I had, and then I'll, I'll go on about her faith. I got into a exercise time. We did aerobics at work, and then Kristen decided that she wanted me to go to spin class, okay? I had never done spin class. She had done, she had gone a few times over to the ETSU Wellness Center. She said, Rebecca, we can do it on our lunch hour. <laughs> and I said, we can do it in our, on our lunch hour in our, our dress clothes, we can do that. She said, yes, we can do that. I said, okay. Okay, I said, what about our hair? What about our makeup? Are we gonna have time to take a shower? You won't need to, we'll wipe off and we'll go back to work. I said, okay. So I said, uh, okay, that's what we'll do. So we went to spin class. It all went well. We made it back within one hour to our office. We were sweating, we were wiping off. We, we changed clothes and then we changed back into our clothes and you can imagine how we looked after one o'clock for the rest of the day. But Kristen always looked a whole lot better than I did, let me tell you. She's, she looked better. During that time, we went two or three times a week and we were really getting into fitness and eating well and different things. And, all of a sudden, I started having problems with my tailbone, okay? I said, Kristen, I broke my tailbone during spin class. And she said, maybe you need to go to the doctor. And I said, no, no, I'm not going to the doctor. I'm a nurse. I know what has happened to me. And I said, and you've caused it. <laughs> so I told her, I said, it's different with you. I said, for me, my bottom is flat and white. <laughs> I said, your bottom is cushiony and narrow. <laughs> and so during all that, I went out and bought uh, these shorts that had cushion in them. <laughs> and she said, Rebecca, I've never seen anything more silly in all my life. I said, do you want me to come to spin class with you or not? And she said, I do. I said, okay, well then this is how it's gonna have to be. <laughs> So to get more, and I just wanted to share that with you, I could share with you many, many, many more stories of how we laughed together and how we spent our time together. But I do want to share you some, with some words from uh, Jesus Christ. Jesus our Lord said these words, and it is in these words that we can find comfort. I am the resurrection and I am the life those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. To know Kristen, you knew you were loved by her. Amen. Her smile would light up a room. As I asked our team members to tell me what they would like for me to share with you today, overwhelmingly, it was her smile. It was not just her beautiful smile. It was her grace. 
It was her beauty. And it was her intellect. I knew the very moment I met her, she would be a leader quickly in our department. She took great pride of the department's accomplishments in her own words being interviewed by the Johnson City Press in the midst of the COVID response effort. My parents have always instilled in me a servant heart and public health was the perfect fit. When asked about what she did to stay positive during the response effort, she woke up every morning with a grateful heart and she started her day praying. Kristen and I shared frequently about our church families. I can see why she loved you. Every Monday morning we would discuss how our weekend went and yes, we talked about our family. But our conversation would ultimately lead to our Christian walk in faith. Kristen's faith has always been strong. But over the last months, courageous comes to the forefront. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7 that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth, through it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Kristen's light always shined. Her light shined in the darkness. She shared with me that she had confidence that God knows best. But she never stopped persevering. And above all, her courage. Her last request to me was to make sure that I told our work family how much she loved them. You see, that is how she always made a difference. Always placing others before herself always being the Christian that I hope I can become because of her example. When I say to know Kristen meant that you know you were loved, one of our team members referenced Matthew 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Kristen always wanted to help others. She left this world a better place, especially for everyone that she touched. Every time we spoke together, our last words were by me saying, I love you. And her response was, I love you more. Thank you, Kristen, for showing me how to be a friend to others. And thank you for showing all of us how to be courageous and faithful servant we should always strive to be. Thank you. It's my honor to be here today. It's a great honor to be a part of this family. I've been a part of this family now for 49 years. Known the family for 51. I was trying to calculate everything, some of you. I remember when I first met my wife, Sylvia was a cheerleader at Northside High School, I believe. Boy, that takes us back a long way, doesn't it? Much has been said, but what I want to do is encourage you today. 
with the life that she lived. I checked this out and wanted to share it with you, so into your spirit. How many days has she lived? How many months has she lived? How many weeks has she lived? And I calculated, no, no, Siri calculated it for me, let me be honest with you. She lived 408 months, 1174 weeks, 13,418 days. My personal opinion, I'm a part of the family now, she did more in that short length of time than most people do in 80 years or more. John, you had a jewel, you know that, don't you? So now what I want to do, and I'm going to be very brief, is give you a legacy, give you something to think about as you leave here today. She has been summoned home. No more tears, no more heartaches, no more pain. She's free. I believe that if she could come back, she wouldn't. Because she is now in the presence of the Lord. Now what she wants us to do is join her. There's going to be a Holy Ghost party in heaven. And the last time that I checked, there ain't no party. Stay with me now. Like a Holy Ghost party. Because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. It's going to be a shouting good time up there in glory. And I'm looking forward to that great getting up morning where every day will be Sunday and Sabbath will have no end. To Reverend Latin and all the preachers, I'm so excited about being up here. I, I just want to sow these words into your spirit that I found. I think it's befitting the moment. You think of yourselves as humans searching for a spiritual awakening. When in fact you are spiritual beings attempting to cope with a human awakening. Seeing yourselves from the perspective of the spirit within will help you to remember why you came here and what you came here to do. With those brief words, may they be sown into your spirit. And I raise a question as I take my seat. What you going to do with the rest of your life? How are you going to live it? Let the rest of your life be Christian's legacy. I listened. I, I loved I loved this family. Love it. Love all of us. But the best thing we can do is run a good race. Finish strong. Don't lay down the torch. Pick it up and let every day be Sunday. I, I think it should be. Let every day with Jesus be, be sweeter than the day before. Just a few more risings and settings of the sun and we all got to go home. We all got to leave here. Don't, don't, don't think any of us are going to get away with anything. What we've got to do now is give God our best. And some glad morning when this life is over, we'll hear him say, well done. Good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things now. Come on up. And in the end, my presence forevermore. Robbie, it's your time. I'm going to go join the family again, preachers. I didn't, I didn't put up with this enough. I'm, I'm a family man. Put my mask back on. Go back here and sit down. And, yeah. Rest, girl. We shall meet again. Hello. If you just bear with me a second as I try to deliver this message the best I can. First, I would like to thank God for being here today. 
and having the chance to honor and pay respect to my little sister. Before I get started, I want to say thank you to John Burchett and the Burch and staff at Burchett Mortuary for providing their services. If you're from this area, they've buried one of your loved ones along the way. And it's one of the longest running black owned businesses in the Tri-Cities. I, I appreciate you continuing your grandfather and father's legacy while holding true to the mantra, caring as we serve. Again, thank you. On behalf of my mom, dad, and Kristen, I want to thank my wife for not only being there for me, but also putting up with me. Being married to Robbie T isn't for the faint of heart, but my, but my sister highly approved and, and was glad I finally met my match. LaDonna and Kristen never called themselves sister-in-law, but sisters in love, which made my heart melt because Kristen was my biggest love life critic, and I'm so thankful she signed off. <laughs> um, uh, as you know, it's bittersweet standing here, as Miss Peggy said, um, Kristen and John, I thought it was 12 years. I mean, John's been around for 20 some years, so I don't know how, but yeah, on this day, on this day, they were married and um, we once stood here celebrating holy matrimony and now we're just celebrating life. I'd like to say thank you to Friendship Baptist Church, my family's home church. My parents were married here my grandfather Eli Daniels and great uncle Dan Parks still serve as deacons. Me, Kristen, and the boys were all baptized here. This is the only place of worship my sister and I ever knew. And I'm proud to say we are lifetime members. Friendship Baptist Church has a nice ring to it, but it should be called Family Baptist because I've considered everyone here as family. Thank you to Reverend Latney and his family as they continue to carry the torch and move the congregation into the future. To our extended family and friends, the outreach has been overwhelming. Not in a bad way, but very sentimental. It makes me proud to say I'm born and raised in Johnson City, Tennessee, in the Tri-Cities area. My parents, John, the boys, are forever grateful for the, opportunity, for the outpouring support from here and beyond. Now, Kristen, you know, everybody standing up here and, you know, going on and there's somebody actually missing from this row right here that most hasn't, and I haven't seen her in here. Is she in here? Miss Charlton. There she is. I, I have to say a special thanks to Miss Charlton. If you guys know about Miss Charlton and Kristen, they were thick as thieves. If I can say that from here, if I can say that from right here. Uh, she took care of Kristen from the time she was two months old and they were never apart. The late great Reverend Charlton and Miss Charlton treated Kristen as a granddaughter they never had. Miss Charlton never missed anything of importance and she helped mold Kristen into the beautiful person she was. Miss Peggy, I wanna thank you for sharing your wisdom and grace with Kristen and my family. Uh, I know you'll continue to guide the boys as, as time goes on, we appreciate you. To my brother John, thank you for loving my sister. John put his bid in early for Kristen, and uh, he, he won the sweepstakes. He won. I, I didn't have to chase off too many folks. Um, I witnessed them both love each other in sickness and health and all the way until Kristen's final call. I know you will honor Kristen by raising the boys into men, and I will be here to help you to do that. To Jaden and Grant, you both know. You both know Uncle T is here anytime you need me. Your mother allowed me to help name you and made sure I was always a part of your life. She was so proud of you too and wanted nothing but the best for you and displayed that every day. Always keep your head high and chest out to honor your mother because you know how hard she fought. Obey your dad and do right by him. He's one of your best friends and has a lot of knowledge about life. Quick story, real quick. Um, 
Growing up, my parents could never keep me home. Uh. <laughs> and Kristen always wanted to be home. Um, uh, Kristen had many friends and would often get invited to a sleepover. A lot of times, though, she never wanted to stay, which makes sense now because if I party with some friends, I'm ready to go home and not sleep with any of them jokers either. <laughs> One time, though, Kristen went to a friend's house all night, and in the middle of the night, the friend's mom called the house saying Kristen's ready to come home. Mom and dad said, okay, we're on the way. The lady rep replied, it's all right, we're in the driveway. <laughs> forward to now and Kristen still wanted to be home and she did it her way until the end. <laughs> In closing, I would like to thank both my parents. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm not used to this. I'm not polished. I'm a little rougher than these guys. <laughs> I'd like to thank both my parents. My sister and I were very fortunate and blessed to have both of you in our life. Kristen came, she saw, and she conquered. You both have been there every step of the way. We can be assured Kristen is helping to prepare a seat at the Lord's table for us all. Never in our wildest imagined did we, did we think we would actually be here. But we watched Kristen handle the situation with grace and mercy. No amount of protection could keep us from this reality. Kristen was extremely proud of you both and didn't want to be anywhere else in the end. She wanted to be with you all. She built her legacy off your foundation and you should be applauded for the dignity and class you always exhibit. Thank you. What an awesome legacy of love that she has displayed and is left in the hearts of so many who got to know her, got to understand what a wonderful woman of God that she is and was. At this time, we will read the obituary silently. When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloom-filled room while I cry for a soul set free. Miss me a little, but not too long, and not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that we once shared miss me but let me go for this is a journey that we all must take and each must go alone it's all a part of the master's plan a step on the road to home when you're lonely and sick of heart go to the friends we know and bury your sorrows in good deeds miss me but let me go. But why cry for a soul set free?
You may be weak, but Jesus is strong. Build your life on the foundation of Jesus, for Jesus is the rock of faith and the rock of hope and the rock of strength that you can depend on. Resolution of love and respect honoring Christian Danielle Taylor Spencer. Whereas in the divine providence of our mighty God on September 24, 2001, he brought to close the earthly life of Sister Christian Danielle Taylor Spencer. The officers and members of the Friendship Baptist Church feel that it is befitting to express our love and sympathy to her family during the home going of Sister Spencer. We accepted Christ as our Savior and Lord and had a strong love for God, family, and church. Christian became a member of the Friendship Baptist Church and served faithfully as a member of the nursery ministry and vacation Bible school until the changes of this time and sickness prevented her participation. We therefore lift you into the presence of our Holy Father who knows best and will always do what is right. You are sincerely in our prayers. Whereas Mrs. Christian Danielle Taylor Spencer was born April 1st, 1987 to Robert and Sylvia Taylor. Christian grew in beauty, wisdom, intelligence, and strength. Christian was a beautiful life of strength and dignity woven through the examples in Proverbs 31 and 25, which says she's clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs with fear, without fear of the future. Whereas Christian was joined in holy matrimony on October 2, 2010, to her high school sweetheart, John Jacob Spencer. She and John were blessed with two sons, Jaden and Grant. She was a devoted mother and reared her children in the admonition of the Lord. She lived to see both of her sons accept Christ as Savior and Lord of their lives and put on Christ by baptism. Above all, Christian loved God and continued to demonstrate her love through serving in the church nursery and vacation Bible school again alongside of her husband. Whereas Christian's high school years, she was known for her basketball skills inherited from her daddy. Bobby T. <laughs> she loved being mentored by her big brother Robbie and continuously exhibited strength as she served as co-captain of the Science Hill High School Lady Topper's team. She was educated in the Johnson City School System where she graduated from Science Hill in 2005 with honors. Christian had a thirst for knowledge and was determined to accomplish her goals by receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in Public Health Administration in 2009 from East Tennessee State University and earning a Master of Public Health in 2019, where she also received a distinct award for, for having the highest grade point average of online students. More recently, on December the 19th, 2019, she graduated from the Tennessee Department of Human Resources Accelerated Leadership Institute, cohort number three, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I believe. <laughs> She never failed to honor God for every achievement, acknowledging that he kept her strong. Kristen further applied her education and her skills serving the state of Tennessee Department of Health as public information officer for the Northeast Region Health Office and was featured in the Johnson City Press in 2020 for her accomplishments in service to the community. Whereas Christian was preceded in death, by her maternal grandmother, Elise Daniels, her paternal grandmother, Geraldine Taylor, and her godfather, Dr. C.H. Charlton. Christian's quiet strength will be left to many other cousins, friends, church, and community members in years to come. Whereas Christian leaves her legacy to, of love to her husband, John, and her two sons, Jaden and Grant, her devoted parents, Robert and Sylvia Taylor, her brother Robert Taylor Jr., LaDonna, grandfather Eli Daniels, known as Doc, godmother Mrs. Janet Charlton, her mother in love, Minister Peggy Cromwell, uncles and aunts, Bentley Daniels and Pam, Stanley Daniels and Donna, Robin Daniels, all of Johnson City, Carol Fields, Steve of Telford, Elaine Holloway, William of Chattanooga, to Yika Wallace, Brian of Elizabethan, and especially her double doodle pet dog Faith. <laughs> Be it resolved 
that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to encourage by remembering this poem. I'm free. Don't grieve for me. For now I'm free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. If my pardon has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a love, a kiss. Ah, yes, these things I too will miss. Be not burdened with the times of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full. I've savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seem all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your hearts and peace to thee. God wanted me now. He set me free. Be it further resolved that a copy of the resolution be given to the family and a copy placed in the church archives. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great. But we want you to know that we share in your sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize that this earthly loss is heaven's gain. I'm submitted on the second day of October 2021 by the officers and members of the Friendship Baptist Church of Johnson City, Tennessee, Deacon Daniel Parks, Chairman of the Deacon Ministry, Reverend Lester D. Latini, Senior Pastor. Come on, Aunt Betty Lou, take us in the room.
is my doctor. He writes out all of my prescriptions. He gives me all of my medicine in the room. Christian was an awesome woman of strength. So we bring you greetings from heaven. Christian's new home. Y'all ought to go there one of these days. <laughs> because when you get there, there will be joy, there will be happiness, there will be peace. And we will be with our Lord God and Savior forever and forever. Yes. And Bishop, you're right. What a party we're going to have. Amen. Everybody going to be saying party over here. <laughs> party over here. We're going to have a good time. So we bring you greetings from the home of Christian, who is now in the presence of God. John and Jaden and Grant, Bobby and Sylvia and Robbie and LaDonna. Sister Cromwell and all of this family, we come here to let you know that it's all right because our dear sister is at home with the Lord. And what, what a woman of strength and encouragement that she was. I would call Christian and she, uh, Bobby and Sylvia, maybe on their way to Nashville or to UT Hospital and John and we would have prayer together. And before it was all over, I was encouraged because of Christian strength. And the fact that she, even in the midst of that battle, was not willing to let the battle take her out. And she was letting everybody know, y'all don't have to worry about me. <laughs> it's going to be okay. And when she was in that time of transition, she was really helping everybody to understand that this is just a doorway into a new place that I will be able to live in joy and peace forevermore. Bobby, I remember when we made the pack. I remember that day that we made the pack. You see, on Easter, and I don't remember exactly what day it was, but there were these two beautiful young girls dressed in the same dress and looking as cute as they could be. Oh, they were pretty little girls and grew up to be beautiful young women. And there in the back, there were two members of the Brat Pack. <laughs> Robbie and Demetrius. And after that Sunday service, Bobby and I had a father's meeting together. And I told Bobby, Bobby, if you will keep Robbie away from Katrina, I'll keep Demetrius away from Christian. And Bobby said, that's a good idea. That way I won't have to kill Demetrius. And you won't have to kill Robbie. <laughs> I told Robbie when I was telling the story the other night at the house, I didn't have a gun, so I was going to have to cut him. <laughs> Robbie said, that's why I didn't marry nobody from Johnson City. <laughs> oh, what a time we have had down through the years. I won't tell it all. And Bobby, you don't tell it all. <laughs> but we've had a good time as family down through the years, growing together and knowing that God is the one who takes care of each and every one of us. So we commend you as a family into the presence of our holy and our almighty God. The Bible gives us to know, and there's a word that's found in Psalms 55. Let me read in your hearing verses 6 through 8. Verses 16 through 18 and verse 22. The Bible said, so I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and the tempest. As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and noon, I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. 
He had redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. Cast your burdens on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Here we are, God, celebrating the life of this beautiful young lady. And God, we thank you for loving her so much that you would take her from labor into eternal rest. And God, now we are here with precious memories that will sustain us until we get home. We love you, God. We honor you and we bless your name. We pray, give God, that you would increase and allow us to decrease so that there would be more of you and less of me. And allow then, God, that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart might be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength and our magnificent redeemer. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 amen and amen. Pastor Shirley Caesar wrote a song many years ago and sang, I've got one more battle to fight in this army. I'm going to lay my burdens down and I'm going to get my crown. I've got one more battle to fight in this army. Christian would say, I've been traveling on my journey and I'm not tired yet. Through hard trials and tribulation, I'm going to get my rest. I know I'm heaven bound and I'm going to get my crown. I've got one more battle to fight in this army. I won't have to cry no more in this army. I see King Jesus there and I'll be free from every care. One more battle to fight in this army. Shirley said, you can weep like a willow and moan like a dove. But if you want to go to heaven, you got to come by love. There'll be no more suffering there. I'll be free from all of my cares. One more battle to fight in this army. My troubles are going to be over, and I'll be free at last. You can meet me on the other shore, and I won't be sick no more. My way may not have been easy, but I'm not going to worry about it. I only had one more battle to fight in this army. C.H. Spurgeon said, I bear willing witness that I owe more to fire and the hammer and the fowl than anything else in the Lord's workshop. I sometimes question whether I have been learned anything except through even the wrong. When the schoolroom is darkened, I sometimes see the most. Have you ever been in a storm in your life? Have you faced giants that seem greater than yourself? Have you cried over the challenges of this life or in the life of those that you love? If you have, remember today that victory is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And in this passage, King David was sailing one of life's stormy seas and even facing a bit of battle. Look at David, if you will, for a few minutes as he is able to help us understand as God's children, it is well with my soul. Look with me, if you will, at David's discouragement sometimes, his desire, and yet God's deliverance. David's discouragement was like this. He felt like he had many times been left by himself. He felt like he'd been deserted. But he, remembered, but he didn't know what Christian knew from Hebrews, the 13th chapter and the 5th verse. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Matthew 28 and 20 said, Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always until the end of the world. David even felt that he'd been deceived. He'd, he'd experienced the hurt of friends who turned their back on him when it looked like it ought to be the, the chance for them to do him well. But he even felt sometimes defeated. Paul teaches us in 1 Corinthians 15 and 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he teaches them in 2 Corinthians 2 and 14, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ Jesus. And he diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. If you will then look at the desire of David which is the desire of many of us in this life. Every now and then you just want to fly away. 
Every now and then you just want to flee away. Every now and then you just want to float away so that the world can't do you no harm. The fact is we can't run from our challenges. We can't run from our problems. We got to face them with the help of the Lord God Almighty. I'm here to tell you today when giants come, when mountains seem unmovable, God will make a way out of no way. How do you know that, preacher? You need to be remembered and reminded every now and then that God knows your name. Come here, Tasha Cobbs. Oh, yes, you said he knows my name. Yes, he knows my name. And oh, how he walks with me. And oh, how he talks with me. And oh, how he tells me I am his own. Oh, how you comfort me. And oh, how you counsel me. Yes, it amazes me that I am your friends. So now I pour out my heart to you. Here in your presence, I am a made new. Oh, Christian will tell you, no fire can burn me. No battle can turn me. No mountain can stop me because you hold my hand. Now I'm walking in your victory because your power was within me. No giant can defeat me because you hold my hand. I don't have to worry about the fire. No fire can burn me. No battle can turn me. No mountain can stop me because you hold my hand. What are you saying, preacher? In this life, challenges can discourage you. And within you rises a desire on the inside of the veil to just run from it all. But oh, if you will, understand that in God's own time, he will deliver you. In God's own time, he will rescue you. In God's own time, he'll pick you up He'll turn you around. He'll place your feet on solid ground. God will make a way. How is he going to do it every now and then? You ought to call on him. Get down on your knees and call on him in the name of the Father. Call on him in the name of the Son. Call on him in the name of the Holy Ghost. You ought to pray Jeremiah's prayer in 33. In Jeremiah 33, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not even know. John 14, 13 through 14, not John over there, but this John. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Krista said, Lord, I want to go home. I could hear her telling mom and daddy and all around, thank you for loving me so much. Thank you for caring for me so much that you did make a way. You have to understand that in order for you to do what God would have you do, you need to have a personal commitment to him. And then you ought to have powerful confidence in him. Won't God make a way out of nowhere for you? Won't God bless you? Won't God take care of you? Be not dismayed, whatever be tired. God will take care of you. Yes, he will. How's he going to do it, preacher? You need to cast all your burdens on the Lord. When it look like they're piling up on you, just pick them up and throw them. And let God have your burdens. He said, come to me and all you are labor and heaven laden. And God said, I will give you rest. Continue in him. Don't let go. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Reflect on the goodness of the Lord God Almighty. Then you can run the race of faith. He teaches us, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by a great calm of witnesses, lay aside every weight. Every now and then you just got to let stuff go. And then you will be able to remember Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within you and me. Oh, do you ever feel like David? Does discouragement sometimes come even in the midst of your trying to live an encouraged life? Well, when it does, you ought to sing Christian song. What's that song, Brother Preacher? With peace like a river, attended my way, 
When sorrows like sea billowed Rome, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, the trial should come. Let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and shed his own blood for my soul. For me being Christ, being Christ is to live. If John above shall not roam, no praying shall be mine, for the death is in life. The will whisper sweet peace to my soul. Oh Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a stroll. The trump shall sound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul, Kristen would tell us. And because now it is well with her soul, she has transitioned from this life to eternal life. I could see her the other day take off and put on so that she might be able to step out and step into the presence of the Lord God Almighty. Now she is able to tell just like every child of the living God, it is well with my soul. No more heartache, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more doctors, no more sick room, no more cancer. She's free, she's free, she's free, free. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sister Christian is free, no longer bound, no more chains holding up. Her soul is resting. She's got a beautiful blessing. Praise the Lord. Our dear sister is free. And because she's free, the joy of the Lord should surround us, comfort us, and make sure that we understand when she's free, God gives us the peace to know we can go on in the name of Christ Jesus. Y'all give God some glory. Come on, give God some honor. Come on, give God some praise. He's worthy from the rising of the sun. He's worthy until the going down of the same. He's worthy of all of our praise. My sisters and my brothers, we are in the hands of Brother Burchett and the staff of the Burchett Mortuary. God bless your family. We gonna see Sister Kristen? Yeah. We gonna see her again. Yeah. And until we get there, she'll always be in a special place Amen. in our heart. Sleep on Sister Kristen, take your rest. We love you baby, but God loves you best. Yeah. Because he loves you more than we can possibly love you. We know. Everything is going to be all right. Will everyone but the family please stand?
to what he used to be. Stop living your life looking behind.